Kelly. Morning, Betty. Honey, I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, you're barely late at all. Honey, I had some really, really tragic news today. Yes, I'm sure you did. It was really sad, too. <sighs> all right, what was it? Has science discovered a definite link between red hair and irreversible insanity? No. Oh, well, it's too late for them if they have. I've known about it for years. Mr Kelly, I don't care if you don't want to know about my tragedy. <sighs> But I think it's very mean of you to make jokes when, when I'm in mourning for a friend. In mourning? Betty, you're serious, aren't you? Well, of course I am. Oh, Betty, I'm terribly sorry. I thought you were just making it up. I wouldn't make it up that I lost Nigel. He's gone. You mean he's gone? Oh, I don't know. You mean he might have gone... <gasps> oh, don't say that. No, no, we must think positive here. I'm sure he's gone. Stop saying he's gone! Well, I'm only trying to cheer you up. <laughs> I'm sorry, Betty. Would you like to talk about it? <laughs> well? Oh, you mean now? Yes! <laughs> Talking about it can help. It's part of the healing process, like the funeral. There's not going to be any funeral. Why not? Because I told you he's gone. You mean gone, yes, gone? He's disappeared. He's vanished off the face of the earth. Well, you've contacted the police, of course. Oh, yeah, for all the good that did. They laughed at me. The, they laughed? Someone is abducted in broad daylight? It was at and, night. All right, someone's abducted in broad nightlight and they laugh? <laughs> they even made jokes about it. Oh, what sort of crass, unfeeling, imbecilic moron would make jokes about such a thing? You did. Well, I may have appeared to, Betty, but that was just my way of showing that I was caring, you know, that I, I was I was trying to cheer you up. I gave them a description and everything. I told them how he's always smoking his little pipe and striking his long white beard. And... Oh, he's an older person, is he? Yeah. Sometimes they live to be 200, you know. 200? Yeah. And I told them how, how he used to sit on his little toadstool stool and... Betty. With his little wet pointy hat on his head. Long white beard. Pointy red hat, sits on a toadstool, 200 years old. Betty, we're talking a garden gnome here, aren't we? <laughs> Someone has abducted your garden gnome. Nigel, spelt with two G's. N-I-double-G-E-L? No. G-N-I-G-E-L. <laughs> G-Nigel Gnome. Get it? G-Nigel Gnome. I should have Gnome, shouldn't I? I should have Ganesed. Don't worry, Betty. There's going to be a funeral after all. Oh, don't be so silly. How can there be a funeral when there's no body? Oh, there'll be a body, all right. <laughs> there'll be a body. Uh, oh, well, 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 we mustn't chatter the day away. You know, I've got a lot of typing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Now, tell me, what's so much fun about stealing garden gnomes? Well, it's a challenge. I hear Betty has had her stolen. Yeah, well, there you go. Everybody's doing it. Mm. Once you've stolen one, what do you do with it? I mean, who wants a hot gnome? Well, you don't actually steal it, Sam. Ben, they've got it. You take it. What do you call it? Well, you see, it's not stealing. I mean, you never intend to keep it, you see. Um, like, what happens is you, um, you take it and then they pay money to get it back. Pay you? They pay you money? Yeah. <gasps> Does everybody know about the scam? It's not a scam, Sam. The money's given to a charitable cause. Good. We can give the money to me. Because I'm a charitable. Sam, then it would actually be stealing. Now, this way, you see, um, well, people don't really mind because it's all a big joke. Hmm. I suppose so. Well, do you reckon we should steal one? Sam, I keep telling you, it's not stealing. It's gnome napping. OK. Well, do you reckon we should gnome nap one, then? Yes. It'll be so much fun. A bit of adventure's good for you. You, uh... You know that big white house off the highway? Uh, with a slate roof? Uh-huh. They've got hundreds of them. I reckon we should go late tonight and nap one. <gasps> what is it? What'll I wear? <laughs> I mean, what's appropriate for no napping? Sam, wear something black. Like a cocktail dress? Oh, won't it be well past cocktail hour? Sam, wear something that's appropriate for climbing trees and crawling through bushes. Oh, I knew that. <laughs> I suppose earrings would be overdoing it. Morning, Betty. Could you file these applications, please? Betty. Yes, Mr. Kelly. What's that on your head? It's a morning band. 
I'm in mourning for Nigel. Oh, for God's sake. Betty, you don't wear mourning bands on your head. Don't you? No, you wear them on your arm. I'm glad you told me that. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, because no wonder it was so tired. <laughs> you know, I think it cut off the circulation. <laughs> My head's all numb. Oh, Betty, it's no challenge when you give me an opening like that. Forget yours? Forget it. Uh, Betty, could you just file those applications, please? What applications? I just gave them to you. I just put them on your desk and said, Betty, would you file the applications, please? Oh, all right. Well, there's no need to tell me everything twice. Well, it's no good telling you everything once. I'm sorry, Mr Kelly. I, I just can't concentrate on anything but Nigel. Oh, do you think that kidnappers are treating him well? Oh, yes. I'm sure they've got him tucked away in a nice, comfy little home away from Nome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you find something to laugh about in my hour of tragedy. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, Mr Kelly. What if they mail me his ear in the post? What? Oh, that's what kidnappers do. They mail you an ear. Oh, do they? I suppose they put a note with it saying, look here, here's a piece of your gnome. That's not funny. Well, Betty, look on the bright side. If they send you an ear, you can plant it and grow a new Nigel. Mr Kelly, that is not funny. Oh, you wouldn't understand. You're not a gnome person. I just hate to think of them hurting Nigel. Well, he's not going to feel anything, is he? I mean, his head's made of plaster, isn't it? You know what that's like, don't you? Hello, is there anybody in there? Oh, it's no good. I just can't work today. I'm too upset and you're not helping. Well, I'm sorry, Betty. I just can't take this seriously. Look... You may as well take the rest of the day off. I think I might, if, if, if you don't mind. Yeah, well, you may as well. I'm not going to get any work done with you sitting around sniffling and snuffling. <gasps> Baby, I'll go for a walk in the park. That'll cheer me up. Yes, do that. Only, Betty. Yes, Mr Kelly? Don't sit in any toadstools. You could be the next one to be kidnapped. <laughs> keeps leering at me when I'm getting dressed. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. I'm not being ridiculous. Look, his eyes are following me around the room. <laughs> Why, well, they're not. They're... they're following me around the room. Good, he likes you. You can keep him in your bedroom. No way, I'm not having him leering at me while I'm getting dressed. <laughs> Quick, oh, I'm my maid, man. How are you? I want you to tell me everything you've been doing, everything. You do? Because you're my friend and I'm interested in everything you do. <laughs> you are? You really oh, are? Yes, every little detail. Uh, all clear, Sam. Okay, Arthur, get lost. <laughs> but I just wanted to hear about everything I've been doing. Yeah, well, I did, but I've got a short attention span. Tough luck. <laughs> oh, no, don't tell me I've missed the news again. Hi, Mr Kelly. Hi, Arthur, what are you doing here? I'm beginning to wonder about that myself. A real life to start, Mr. Kelly. Right, quiet, everybody. I want to hear what's been happening in the real world. The one that doesn't have Betty in it. Well, I'll go home then. Fine, Fine Arthur. Arthur. So much for the extended family. Good evening. Welcome to Real Life. And in Sydney today, the time-honoured practice of stealing garden gnomes took on a serious new twist. I can't escape from gnome napping. Late last night, someone broke into the grounds of Mr Harold Wing's home in Chatswood and stole an antique garden gnome valued at over $2,000. $2,000? Mr Wing, a successful Sydney restaurateur, has told police he intends to prosecute the thieves to the full extent of the law. David White takes up the story to Mr Wing's garden. Oh, my God. What? Well, that's the... That's what? That's, uh... The, the house that's off the highway, the one with the slate roof. So what? So, uh... Hmm. Will you excuse us a moment, Mr Kelly? I just remembered there's something I have to tell Sam. <laughs> oh, I don't know what it is, but this gnome business is driving everybody mad. Sam, oh. that's the place, that's the place. Oh, no, that's shut the... up! Oh, Sam, they said that the gnome was valued at $2,000. Ben, this is no time for you to panic. All right, Sam, I I'm sorry. It's time for me to panic! <laughs> Stop it, Sam. Look, all we have to do is take it back, that's all. But, but we can't do that now. It, it's behind the sofa underneath Dad's nose. Oh, yeah, and Mr Wing's place is probably crawling with police by now. <laughs> police? Sam, don't worry about it. Look, we'll just wait until things look, calm down and then we'll sneak back and replace it. 
And couldn't you just do that by yourself? <laughs> Sam, we are in this together. Mm, all right. Now, don't say a word to anyone, not anyone. Hi, guys. Ah! What's doing? Nothing. And you just keep your mouth shut about it, okay? <laughs> Why'd you buy a gardener, Mr. Kelly? Because I want to get some work done in the office, Arthur. You think that I might be a better secretary than Betty? You're probably type faster than she could. Oh, damn, I got dirt over my hands from the gnome. I'll go and wash it off. Can I have a drink of milk, Mr. Kelly? Yeah. Oh, and the chocolate Monty's are no longer behind the flower bin. Oh. Well, I'll try to find them anyway. You will not! I went past the place, you see, and things have quietened down, so I reckon that we'd be able to take Hi, it back. Hi, guys, what's just... doing? Uh, nothing, Arthur. Yeah, I... Uh... We'd love to stay and chat, Arthur, but um, we're really busy, huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, you should see the terrific garden gnome in the living room. Gnome? Uh, where did you find a gnome? Right there on the coffee table. Have you been playing with it? I didn't touch it. Arthur, you better not have been fiddling with it. I didn't even go near it. I thought you said you hid behind the sofa. But I did. Arthur, you better not have broken this. I didn't touch it. Well, look, Sam, just quick, let's just get it out of here, OK? <laughs> right, now for a cup of coffee. Arthur? Yes, Mr. Kelly? Have you been playing with a garden gnome? I didn't touch it, I tell you. Then where is it? I don't know. It, look, it was right there on that coffee table. Now it's gone. Now, come on, what have you done with it? I didn't do anything. I don't even live here. Then what are you doing here? I've just been asking myself the same question. I warn you, I'm in no mood for practical jokes today. I heard Sam say something about hiding it behind the sofa. Why don't you look there? Arthur, if you're going to blame someone, blame someone who's here. She was here. She was just here. So was Ben. Oh, yeah, I suppose they're behind the sofa, too. All right, what is this doing here? Oh, you don't know anything about it, right? Why do I bother? <laughs> now, this time, do not touch it. But I didn't... Why do I bother? Why do I bother? <laughs> On second thoughts, I think I'll take you home. That way I'll make sure you won't get up to any mischief. Well, I feel a lot easier about things now and put it back. Yeah, what does that? Oh my God, look! It's back! How can it be back? Oh, tell me I'm not imagining things! Did we or did we not just replace that damn gnome back on its pedestal? Oh, I thought we did. Well, how come it's back here? Well, well... It must have followed us home. <laughs> it followed us home so fast it beat us here. Maybe it's a homing gnome. <laughs> it's still leering at me, although now it looks as though it knows something I don't. Sam? There's something fishy going on here. Oh, brilliant, Ben. Absolutely brilliant. Tell me, did you figure that out yourself? What a big ears here give you a hint. Now, stay calm, Sam. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Oh, I can't wait. All right. Here's my plan. I'm going to go back and check Mr Wang's place. What for? Well, to see if he's still there. How can he still be there? He's here, for Pete's sake. Yeah, but maybe... It's... We put him back there, and we came back here, and he's got here in the meantime. So, if you stay here and keep an eye on him, then I'll go back to Mr. Wang's place and see if he turns up there. Just a cotton-picking moment, pal. What? You're not leaving me here alone with old leery eyes. Sam, you're not afraid of him, are you? Ben, he apparently just beamed himself here from Mr. Wang's garden. Yes, I am a tad nervous of him. He's haunted or possessed or something else that I don't know what to call it, but I don't like it and I'm not staying here with it. Sam, look, I'm sure that there is a logical answer to all this. The only logical answer you're getting is I'm coming with you. Oh, all right then. But I'm sure that there's a, a simple answer for the whole thing. Hmm. Witchcraft is simple. Scary, but simple. Come on. Now, just, just keep your eyes closed. Oh, what's a big surprise, Mr Kelly? Well, just hang on, you'll see. You ready? <laughs> Open your eyes. Surprise! <gasps> Mr Kelly! Wherever did you find him? Well, Betty, it's not actually Nigel. Oh, it's Nigel. I'd know him anywhere. It's Nigel. You'd know him anywhere. <laughs> oh, Mr Kelly, you are such a wonderful man. True. I could kiss you. Oh, no. Uh, it's, no, no, not in front of the little one. Oh, oh yeah. We mustn't make him jealous. <laughs> that was foremost in my thoughts. <laughs> oh, well, come along, Nigel. We've got to take you back to your home in the park. Park? You keep him in a park? Betty, he's a garden gnome, not a park gnome. I know, but I haven't got a garden, so I keep him in the park across the road. Oh, no wonder he was stolen. You can't keep him there. You'll have to lock him up somewhere. 
I can't lock him up. He's used to his freedom. It's to the open spaces, to the, the unrestricted rolling acres of the park. He's a free range gnome, is he? Yes, and I cannot and I will not lock him up. All right, I can and I will drive you and Nigel home. Come on. I don't want to look. Tell me. Sam, you're not going to like what I tell you. Oh, is he still here or is he gone? Which one would you prefer? Neither. Because if he's still here, well then, that's really scary because we just saw him there. But if he's gone, well then, that really was him that we saw there. And I don't know how he got back there. And that's really scary too. That's really scary too. I'm afraid he's gone. <sighs> How's he do it? Well, I don't know. Maybe he teleports himself from here to there. You mean he's some sort of astral travelling gnome? Well, I don't know. Why ask me? I've been wrong twice already. Oh. Well, I'm going to my bedroom. And if there's any gnomes there, I'm hitting the streets, screaming. <laughs> so what was he wanting to have with Jen? Oh, I've just got to glue something together. See, he's a bit broken. I didn't do it. I'm not taking the fall for this one. Arthur, calm down, will you? I know you didn't break him. I got him from Shelley Parsons' mother. She doesn't want him anymore because her dog knocked him over and broke him. Well, why do you want it? To cheer Betty up. Now hold his head, will you? It wouldn't cheer me up if a garden gnome took my job. <laughs> there, he's almost as good as new. It says his stuff takes a couple of hours to set properly. Oh, well, we better not leave him here. We'll put him in the other room. <laughs> oh, he's no lightweight, is he? We'll just put him on a chair. It should be all right here till the door sets. <laughs> Hey, do we go down to the shops and play Street Fighter? Okay. Will you let me win again? Probably. Okay, but if you do, pretend you're really trying, will you? You have my word, Arthur. <laughs> oh, hello, Arthur. What are you doing here? <laughs> huh. Kids, they get glued to the television, they never answer a word you say. <laughs> I wonder how long it's going to be so I can walk in his front door without a strange sense of foreboding. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, do you realise that if, if we'd have done any damage to that gnome at all, we'd be up for thousands of dollars? Ben, we couldn't have damaged it. It was supernatural. It was a garden gnome from hell. <laughs> <laughs> all the same, I feel a hell of a lot better knowing that it's back safely where it belongs. <laughs> oh my God! It's back! <laughs> it can't be back. It is back. How did it get back? <laughs> that no we're taking him back now no but somebody will see us i don't care if somebody sees us sam grab him we're taking him back now just grab him and grab him i'm grabbing that gnome <laughs> now sam be very very careful because that's a very valuable gnome don't worry i won't break it okay well just be careful you know I just... <laughs> <laughs> seen anyone faint before. You didn't see him this time. You're right. I wish I'd come home a couple of minutes earlier. Ben, wake up. Ben. Oh, my God. The gnome. It, it came off. It's the one that... That Jenny brought home for Betty. It is? Yes. Yeah, it's all right. He was already broken, Ben. It wasn't your fault. But, but, but... Don't say a word, Ben. It's all okay. It is? Yes. Dad, why don't you go and make dinner? <laughs> I'll, I'll keep an eye on him. <laughs> you sure? Yes. Oh, yes. I'm just fine, Mr Kelly. All right, just uh, take it easy. Come on, Jen, you can give me a hand. I've got it all worked out. There were three gnomes. Three? Yes. Well, Dad brought one home for Betty, and that was the one we took to Mr Wang's. So where's the $2,000 one? Betty's got that one. Mr Wang's got the wrong one. The, <laughs> the wrong one. Oh, I see. I think. Therefore you are. And then Jenny brought home the broken one, but I mean, it was already broken, you see, and we just broke it again. W w w was that worth $2,000? It wasn't worth diddly. Oh, Sam, I think I must still be unconscious. This is all starting to make sense. So all we have to do is go back and exchange Betty's gnome for Mr. Wang's gnome and vice versa. Ah, so Mr. Wang will have the white one. Right, <laughs> that's what I said. And Betty will have Mr. Wang's wrong one. Wrong one? That's what I said. I'm starting to get confused again, Sam. I think I must have woken up. Welcome to Real Life.
in a follow-up to the great gnome robbery, we're pleased to report that the $2,000 gnome has been returned to its Chatswood home undamaged. Its owner, Mr Harold Weng, a well-known Sydney restaurateur, has informed police that he will be taking no further action. In another unrelated garden gnome incident, a Sydney woman has been arrested for discharging a firearm in a public place. <laughs> It wasn't really a firearm anyway. It was just my fiancé Stan's shotgun loaded with salt bitter. So uh, whoever was fiddling with my garden line will have a pretty sore bottom tonight. <laughs> OK, come on. Let's have dinner, then I'll go down and bail her out. <laughs> ben, sit down. I think I'd rather stand, thanks, Mr Kelly. <laughs> Recorded in front of a studio audience. This has been a Gary Riley production for the Seven Network. This is Betty speaking.